Uh, no. It works now. It would work, I guess. No, mouse, I did. Okay, I apologize for being late. I thought the meeting would be in the other building. Uh, then I am accommodated. Uh, there's some pressure on me now that I was late, both in time and expectations. Uh, but I still want, would like to say that I uh, to spend a minute on Trieste. This is the first uh, city where I could get to, as a young researcher, from behind the Iron Curtain. You know, communist era, 74. Uh, my boss uh, had a good connections to the party leader, and uh, I could come here as a young person. I had a landlady who spoke a little bit of Hungarian, a little bit of German, a little bit of Italian. Uh, Trieste used to be, and maybe still is, a melting pot for this part of Europe. I enjoyed my stay, and uh, I thank the organizers that they invited me to this place. And as a reward, I will, I will try to entertain you during my talk, which is a, a little bit strange. It is, a, it is about the most recent uh, results. We have about uh, through hardly, I mean, coupled the topics, they are all related to collective motion in one way or another, but not necessarily about collective motion. It is also about collective behavior. I will show no equations, virtually no equations, only movies, mostly. But I do that not because it is more fun. It is more fun also, but because I believe that a movie is uh, three megabytes information, I mean 25 times three megabytes information in a second. So try to explain uh, a movie to someone in, in detail. No, you need uh, millions of words. Uh, and since this is about uh, collective behavior, 
and motion movie is a good uh, way to show it. Also, I would like to discuss two principles which are not uh, very new, but I will put it in them into context and maybe at some point you will be able to apply it to your place case also. Now this is, these are just a few examples related to my talk. The, there are some things uh, swimming here, but uh, they are not fish, but they are fish skin cells. They were put into this one half millimeter square and they swim together. This is another example for how cells behave uh, when they are, there are two types. The reds are move faster and like to stick to each other more than to a green one and the greens move slower and like to stick to each other. This is an, our experiment and it shows that over 16 hours you can get a structure which is almost like one millimeter, which is a large uh, scale on the level of the cells. And I will, I will touch upon this. This is a very old movie, uh, a demonstration of an experiment about the population dynamics of mice, so not rats. And in part, I show you this to you. Uh, I, I hope I will be able to s stop this. Okay, so they have the mice. They have the thousands of mice. First they colored them, but then uh, they got tired. So it was impossible to follow. And okay, so look at this person. This is how they used to collect data. So I would like to show you what happens if you collect data differently. And this is our first drone uh, flock. A little bit uh, uh, uneasy. They move a little bit disorganized way, but they still are cat trying to catch someone. So they, are, they have a mission. Uh, they, they chase uh, at an evening, cold evening, Budapest, uh, myself. Uh, this has a, a, a little scientific, I mean, they, they, I think this person who is a professor in London believes that what she is doing is related to science, uh, but what she is doing is uh, she simulates uh, with her colleagues, of course, she may not be even uh, write programs, collective motion. But of course, it is uh, done in an artistic way. And if you ask her, she sent me this on uh, Saturday, yeah, two days ago. Uh, she got ready with this. Uh, it's, uh, she says that uh, uh, collective motion is a good vehicle for uh, connecting a number of uh, features of nature and uh, human nature. Oh, it touches us, uh, such, uh, such a picture, such a movie, and uh, through uh, arts, she can go even deeper to some of the aspects of collective motion. Now, this is from uh, YouTube. Okay, so, uh, I have uh, three main topics, and they are intended to be biological, f biological physics, and uh, robotics, just like the way this meeting is imagined. Uh, the first one is, I would say, the biological physics, because I will talk about forces between cells. Uh, this w was just published. So I will have a just published, to be published, to be written up, and already appeared. Or, yeah, or, or accepted. So very recent, everything. What you see here is, is what happens 
in a zebra a fish embryo after five hours, after six hours. Do you see this? The lots of lots of collective motion. And in fact, uh, something happens around this time and some new features appear uh, around the yolk. You know, they, they have a yolk, the egg divides. Now there are about 14,000 cells in the embryo. And of course, we are interested in embryo development for two reasons. One is that embryonic development is one of the most uh, impressive miracles of nature. We don't understand. We, we don't understand many things, you know? But uh, this is something which, which happens in, in, uh, in the womb of our wives also, you know, when, when, it's, uh, when we develop. And uh, it is clear, every, many papers start with uh, claiming that collective motion plays an important role in embryogenesis, but a uh, few eventually take data. Okay, so uh, we studied this, okay. I found this uh, three days ago, and I thought it was an impressive uh, picture of a zebra embryo around maybe 30 hours. Do you know how much it takes? You know, it takes uh, 72 hours after the first division uh, of the egg, and after three days, the fish swims away. So a lot of well-defined collective motion, orchestrated collective motion has to take place so that every cell finds its own place. In a bit of more uh, uh, technological uh, terms, the main statement of the paper is that these uh, precordial plate progenitor cells, uh, as they migrate, they affect the neuroectoderm uh, morphogenesis. And uh, this happens, no, the, the most important, these are just names of cells. No biologists know these. You don't, of you don't, doesn't have to know. You just have to know that these are two kinds of cells which uh, move together during, uh, not, not, not together, by the way, in the opposite direction during embryogenesis. And uh, as, as it is written here, and these cells, which move against uh, the, the neuroectodermal cells, which uh, flow around the egg, the or the yolk, yolk uh, they, move, they move in the opposite direction and through uh, forces, uh, which are just uh, regular physical forces, uh, friction forces, no, they're sticky. They stick to each other more uh, of, to its kind than to the other kind, but they still have a friction among them. And it is uh, mediated with the E. cathedrin, which is a regular uh, molecule for these processes. So these are the neuroectodermal cells, and we are looking now from above, you know. The, and, and here it is from the side. Here is the yolk. This is the white type, the, the regular, and this is a mutant which doesn't have these PPL cells. Uh, so this is what happens if you have uh, these two uh, morphogenesis processes. We will see that by the end, this remain uh, structured so this, this, this is the first uh, structural footprint of the brain of the zebrafish. And this one loses uh, this uh, structure because the BPS cells, which uh, through biophysical force friction, do, do not modify the way it is distributed uh, in the brain, in the developing brain. I don't go through these uh, because of a uh, lack of time, but uh, I, I just demonstrate 
that our part in this huge study was uh, only you know, take uh, all, uh, make the flow fields from the movies and calculate all sorts of time and space dependent uh, correlation functions which would support the idea that the development eventually goes along the way what I already mentioned. You know. Until then, you only have some movies. If you do all the calculations and you do much more, uh, uh, five more uh, carefully selected, uh, very complicated control experiments, then it becomes accepted into nature cell biology. So if we extracted uh, these uh, flow fields with the PIV method, which is very common to use for these purposes, and you see how much different the two kinds, the one which doesn't have the PPL and the wild type uh, streams of cells look like. I move to, to rats. There were two uh, experiments on rats, two kinds. Martin Knight, who is uh, sitting here, is, uh, has been very uh, deeply involved in both. By the end, we both, uh, and, and the whole group, you know, there were more people, just fell in love with the rats. They are amazing, uh, intelligent, sensitive, uh, uh, little animals. Uh, we put, we, we, want, we, we wanted to, this is one of the main questions of collective behavior. That if you act collectively, that it, okay, if, if there's a little society, members, a group, it's a question whether you are individually more efficient by the end uh, as a part of a group than if you are not part of a group. You are solitary only. And the, the, this is not a, an earth-shaking or very extremely counterintuitive result what we had uh, obtained. But uh, we, here, we, okay, so Mate built uh, a maze. Uh, you know, the rats are usually made, put into a maze individually, and there are lot of, lots of publications and experiments about how may rats find the, the, the way out from a, rat, uh, a maze. Here, a labyrinth. Uh, here, th this is uh, our, our labyrinth. Um, this is the entry, and you, you know, because of the size of the rats, you know, now we, we could have uh, only a two by four, uh, uh, a labyrinth which is not extremely complicated because it would have taken a space which is much larger than a room. Uh, so there, you will see. Uh, this shows uh, the. the tracking with the colors as a function of time, uh, uh, the trajectory of a single. Uh, so it started out with red here, and then it spent a lot of time between the two extreme cases around here when you see the green color. And this is uh, the shape, and this is the to topology of our labyrinth. It is hierarchical, and there is only one place around here where at the, at the dead end when there is a voter available. At the other places, they have a similar construction, but no voter comes out from that uh, places. Okay, so this is what I mentioned. Uh, apparently, they liked Mate even more than they liked me because he has two of them. But if you if you look at this picture, sorry, if you look at this picture, uh, I would say uh, I couldn't tell who is more curious about the other. Uh, well, this is a movie of the experiment in real time. I will stop it uh, soon. 
this is just for you to demonstrate that they're, they don't, they're relatively fast and at the same time slow in finding the place where water is here. So they are searching. In, and uh, if, if uh, the movie is uh, five times uh, faster, then uh, at some point, one of them finds the voter, yeah? And amazingly, very soon, a number of other rats show up at the same place, although it is not as uh, simple as you think. Uh, it is very far from how ants do this thing, you know. They, they are, ants are also extremely efficient in locating uh, sources of uh, food and then go there. But they interact with, they have a very special mechanism for telling this to the other ants. Rats don't do that. They tend to follow other, another rat, uh, rat a little bit. But if the other rat is uh, going back to the water, drink a little bit, coming away, going back, and so there's, there, we don't, I mean, it, it, I cannot present you all of the possible explanations and calculations, but the, the conclusion is uh, this, that if you, are, if you order uh, eight, eight rats in, in the order in which they got access to water. So some found it very quickly, like here, you know, this is an, in, this is a, this is an individual, this is the individual which found the water uh, the second fast, you know, the, he was the second, his time was uh, uh, just one, uh, okay, so the, you, you order it along the time, how much it takes them to find water. If they are in group or, okay, this is, this is individual. The, the most uh, inefficient rat uh, here found it uh, o o around 300 uh, seconds uh, after being individually uh, entered into the maze. If they, if they were entered into the maze in a group, then the last one who got to the source, to the resource, to water, uh, was uh, for them, for it, it took only 180 seconds, so the group as a whole was at least uh, two times more efficient. And we excluded the things like smell uh, or vi even visual clues, everything was, excluded. Mate was uh, very careful about this and uh, uh, he, he even had arguments about, you know, I would like, I would have liked to help the rats to communicate somehow, but they didn't communicate in any ordinary way. It was just um, motion, just motion. This is uh, something which we should write up because we have, a, we have so many interesting results that uh, we are behind writing up uh, the paper. This is a several years long study, reminiscent of the one which was, I showed you from 1962, but instead of uh, you know, binocular, we used other methods. Oh, we had uh, four groups uh, over seven individuals in uh, four arenas. Uh, Everything was recorded over 10 months because you were, uh, I will tell you why. So 30 terabyte data accumulated in the, in the, you know, in the form of video data. Uh, we, we tested things night day versus you know, dark daylight, mixing uh, group members. This, this was exciting. You know, you, you, our groups behaved very differently. They were all from the same origin. We ordered them uh, from a provider. They brought the four times seven rats to us. We paid the, the fee and we put them into four groups and the four groups were, behaved completely differently. And then we mixed the, the groups. 
And after mixing, the groups started to behave again very differently and th this makes writing up the paper more difficult, but uh, the, 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 it shows that the process is extremely rich and the complexity of social life, which uh, we are subject to, uh, maybe may have some origins already on the level of rats. And uh, most of the experiments on collective behavior are not done on uh, mammals, and now I see why. You know, observations you can do. You, you, you can observe uh, apes, but you, you don't have a control to test to them. And uh, because we had some uh, tests also, uh, so there was a high resolution, extremely sensitive video camera, so that it would see in the night. Uh, and th this is in fact, this was in my mind, this was the, fo the most important goal, just to see how, th that is why we, we followed it for, for 10 months, how hierarchy emerges in a society. We live in a, of course, obviously, in a highly uh, hierarchical society on every level, among the physicists, at the university, in the political life. You know, it's, it's one of the most common feature of the society, that it is hierarchical. So we made a lot of movies uh, with this arrangement, and I will show you some. This is, uh, again, as before, uh, real time, during uh, uh, daylight conditions. So this is when they are uh, sleepy, slow, and uh, the, everything was automatized. You know, for 10 months, everything was, so even feeding and giving water and everything was uh, arranged through, driven by a computer and with some mechanical devices. Here you will see, this will be a little bit uh, uh, faster because it is uh, now accelerated, accelerated um, I don't know, here are the days, you know. Okay, no, okay. now, so this is now day, uh, uh, night. You, you may have noticed that uh, their, their, their behavior beca became much more excited, of course, uh, accelerated, but you know, there are two rats in this thread wheel, uh, and these two ones, I, I'm not sure, I cannot tell, you know, and it's very difficult to stop it at the right time, but they had a lot of fights. So just watch what you see, uh, and they had the injuries and everything. It was a, a society with a friends, enemies, uh, dominance, uh, subordinates, uh, and everything. And of course, we, we, we had the, the track of all of this with a precision of a few centimeters because they were individually labeled uh, by three green uh, uh, colors. So this, this was a very sophisticated uh, program which was developed by one of the co-authors which uh, eventually, okay, I stop here. This is red red, blue, purple. You can see that, I hope. You know, this red, this red is uh, uh, orange, blue, purple. But it's, uh, this is red, green, blue. No. So each red had its uh, color, bar, you know, color bar. Uh, it was a, you know, it's a, this is a very long story. That they leaking, the, it's very difficult to, uh, made uh, to, to make them identify for a long time. And I think this is the only, okay, this is the first result I would like to show you. Uh, this shows, you know, they, they, they go over the place and they o turn up at a given time, at a given position. And there's an average for the seven members of the group. And then you take one, 
uh, rat number one, you know, it's arbitrary. You know? And you watch how much time it spent compared to the average. If it spent more time, it's red. If it spent less time, it's blue. And you see this particular rat liked to be everywhere. He, this, this means it was on the top of uh, the nest, you know, of the house, uh, much more than others. And he didn't really like the thread wheel. You know, the thread wheel, you know, it's just for, for not for rats, but uh, uh, they love it to do it. Uh, uh, and this is another rat. And it spent, he, this rat spent uh, most of his time in the thread wheel. wheel. And, uh, you know, it's not trivial which one is the dominant. Uh, because they like the thread wheel. And prior uh, studies uh, concluded that the one who spends more time in the, in the wheel uh, is more dominant because that's the preferred position. But it's not like that, you know. Uh, if a dominant male, like this one, approaches a thread wheel and there is a, a pure little rat in the thread wheel, he, he, stri he, he starts to, to rotate the, uh, the wheel and the dominant male cannot get access to him. So it, he defends himself by being in this uh, preferred place. Now, uh, I don't want to take much time. Everything is, thing is written here. The, we, here we destroyed the, we, we, we produced the passage among the four corners. And this is uh, the trajectories the heat map, you know, the frequency of occurrence uh, for a particular for, for rat three. And again, you know, it is why it didn't like this one. It liked this one the most. Uh, uh, here, it, it went to drink here instead of here. Uh, so, well, this is not this is not too much about the evolution of hierarchy, but it is much more about the complexity of their behavior, and we will see maybe at some point whether it is similar to how people behave. I think there is similarities, but uh, we could also find uh, dominance hierarchy as well, uh, because if you if you imagine that red A dominates uh, uh, rat B, then B most of the time runs in front of uh, rat A. And from this uh, simple rule, you, uh, it is possible to construct a hierarchical uh, network of interactions. Uh, there is someone who is chased by everyone, and there is no, someone who is not chased by anyone. He is on the top. Uh, Okay, this is the last uh, part. Uh, we've almost within 40 minutes. Uh, this will be already about uh, robots, uh, but I started showing you that uh, life, ordinary life, you know, uh, our life, and robots are, is uh, related, of course. And uh, this chimpanzee is apparently a curious one and uh, interrupts <laughs> with the robot, <laughs> and the robot loses. <laughs> and look how, how curious this uh, chimpanzee was. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is a, a paper which uh, was accepted uh, two weeks ago into Science Robotics, which is uh, the science journal, but uh, it doesn't have an impact factor yet. It's a new... Uh, released by the science uh, publishing group. And it is about optimized flocking of autonomous drones in confined environment. And I don't have uh, time to, to, to explain everything what I was going to. Uh, but at least I would like to discuss, uh, you know, just provoke your thinking uh, that I would like to introduce this as a principle instead of, you know, some people are using this, but I would like to claim that a good model 
uh, of a complex, a very complex, complex uh, uh, system. Like drones are very complex, you know. 30 drones are very complex. There are time delays, uh, maybe it, it will be later shown. There are a lot of effects which have to be taken into account. So there are only a few rules, but they have uh, many parameters, the rules themselves. In a realistic case, not in a simplest possible model. Uh, so it, it, you just add one more rule, which says so that you are entitled to use uh, parameters in your model, which are too many. And the physicists, I didn't used to like, and I still don't like models with too many free parameters, because which one is relevant and what? No, if you have a, 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 a fitness function, so you know what you want your system to do, you know, fly together or chase someone or explore an area, you, you build a fitness function. It's like the order parameter in statistical mechanics. You know? so, so, so you, have, you need a, a good function which says uh, how well your uh, system operates. And then uh, you optimize the parameters uh, so that the fitness function had its maximum value. And suddenly you get rid of uh, maybe 15 par free parameters out of 18. Because for this, you need to change a little bit about the, what you think about modeling. You have to take the Darwinian thinking very seriously and, and imagine that anything which works very well uh, has optimal parameters already. So you don't have to guess. You just optimize. The evolutionary optimization, what we used, is not the most trivial optimization. And uh, so this is, uh, these are our drones. Uh, there are 30 of, of them, them at this point. One of the organizers had a fixed wing uh, uh, cluster uh, swarm of drones, which had a, this, these are the very different cases. Uh, I believe that th this gave us uh, more freedom to put a lot of electronics uh, onto the drone. So they, they, they had a brain. You know, there was a, a Linux computer on each one, and they, they had a very, sen high, uh, very sensitive sensors. And all of this was needed because uh, perturbations, oops, I don't know how to come out from this. Uh, okay. So time delays is an extremely, you know, you, you, those, the, I, I don't have to explain this to these robotics people, but, uh, you know, biologists may not uh, um, appreciate it, how much trouble you get because of uh, time delays, you know. Your system starts to do this because it uh, uh, notices uh, that they are too close, only too late, so then they apart, and uh, it's, a, it's a long story. Uh, if, if, if the arena is rectangular, then they tend to get stuck into one of the corners. Uh, you, you have, your model has to make them able to avoid all of this, uh, so th this, this is a, uh, I would call this a simple, but each term here has, you know, very natural, you know, frictional, interaction with the wall, interaction with the obstacle, but there each has parameters. Then we evolutionarily optimize them, and then for each velocity, these, you know, we, we, we want them to move in average with a given velocity. So this is the parameter we uh, would like to keep free. So we feed into the computer and we find for each parameter value uh, of a average velocity uh, a set of values after optimization for the non-interesting parameters, which are there, which are important, 
Well, they, they just come out as a result from optimization. So this is uh, how computer simulation looks like. Doesn't seem to be extremely sophisticated, but uh, it, it, you really have to enter this field to include all of the noises and the time delays and uh, everything to appreciate it. What you see here, of course, uh, uh, looks like a computer simulation. But it's not a computer simulation. It is uh, the track logs of an ac actual experiment of a drones. You know, they were uh, released, and this is how they moved around. And it is very much like the simulation, and it is also quite realistic, I believe. Uh, Okay, I'm very close to the end. I think this is the last. Uh, so this shows uh, how 30, I think 30 uh, drones in the field. You know, this is the lights of Budapest. We are about 30 kilometers from Budapest over a, a broad area. There, these are my colleagues here, and they will chase this one. Uh, and look how smooth. I mean, this is the, this is the main point. They're moving very smoothly, very, in a very organized manner. And at the same time, they uh, act, no, they do the task. OK, so this is a, at the, we went to the field. We had some long uh, exposure f photos uh, of the drones. And all sorts of funny uh, pictures came out from this. Thank you very much.